Yep. So when we say ghost gun or you hear the term ghost gun, really at the end of the day, it means homemade firearm. Exactly. And why do, you know, why is this such a controversy, do you think? Uh, you know, uh, here is, here's why. There is a triad of um, ways that I think the anti-gun folks try to restrict our Second Amendment rights. Um, we talk about restricting who can possess firearms. We talk about restricting where you can possess firearms. And this is just one leg of that triangle to restrict Second Amendment rights, which is what you can possess. That's a great way to restrict the Second Amendment. And so we're talking about this because there is now, and really the last couple of years, a push to restrict these unserialized firearms, 80% lowers, 3D printed firearms, you know, your your collective ghost gun right. is one of those things that is really in um, it's in the crosshairs for the anti-gunners. Yeah, and I'd say the two things that I see come up over and over when it comes to, hey, this is why anti-gunners want these things regulated. The two points that I hear argued over and over is, you know, it skips the universal background check that you would have to typically go through through a federal firearms licensed dealer and FFL. And then the second argument that I hear on that front is the firearms trace that the ATF performs. You know, if a gun is found at a crime scene, you know, what the ATF does is they trace it back to the manufacturer and then who it got distributed Mm -hmm. to. And then, you know, the FFL, the gun store that eventually sold it and the point of sale, who actually bought the gun in an attempt to locate, you know, a suspect in the gun crime. And we find time and time again that that person who bought the gun isn't a lot of the times the person who used the gun in a crime. Exactly. Exactly.